it was it was all smoke basically and it was like a fog sometimes you know you couldn't see a thing it was just battle kill after battle kill firing oh it's magic stokes magic isn't it i mean all right you know it's a scruffy hole We didn't see much of the pits because they were out of town, but the pot banks themselves, there were dozens and dozens and dozens. When it was knocking off town at lunchtime, or well, night time they finished, millions of people came out all dressed in white. Nobody caught the bus, they walked from me, they walked from Fenton, and it was like as though they'd come off a football match. <laughs> All the pavements outside the pot banks are all white dust. Oh, it was hard work. A bit more nice, you know, and we all got done together, but it was hard work drawing the ovens and, and the slippers, and it was hard work. Oh, it was dirty. It was, I, that, that was worse going in them. Sometimes you had to go in with just a costume on. What is that? They'd all be out rolling the baskets up and they'd be up running upstairs with them on their shoulders, you know. They only got paid just for that job, you know, to me. Then straight into the pub then, they're back with the money, you know. <laughs> That's how them lads were, you know what I mean. They say that the two best drinking towns in Staffordshire are Burslem and Longton. No longer does that apply. Uh, but certainly at the end of the Victorian and the Edwardian period, they were very, very big boozing towns with public houses virtually everywhere. You walk down the Strand, for instance, you walk down Market Street and all the areas around there, uh, and there was virtually a pub every, every 50 yards. I've been looking into the why it's called the American. Uh, in the 1840s, there was much employment in the potteries and uh, due to the introduction of machinery, so people were losing their jobs left, right and centre. In 1844, the Pottery's Emigration Society was formed and land was purchased in Wisconsin and a draw was held for the would-be immigrants. The lottery was held at Hanley Covered Market and the area saw an ep epidemic of American fever, seeing pubs, streets and other features of being new America. I used to walk past to go my aunties usually at least once or twice a week and you know, it always fascinated me, you always had this big stone potty, you know, and that sort of thing, which one or two pubs did. I would imagine after the war this factory would have been empty because we know it was this wartime story. Stevenson's come along and chose the last five letters of their own name and called it Ensign Waves. What I can remember is my uncle used to work here and uh, they used to uh, make me a little uh, clay mice. They, they looked like a mouse, like, you know, because I was only young and I know they got a little tail on. No, nobody called him Mr. Stevenson, but he probably did to his face, I don't know, but sort of behind his back. He was always known as the old man, or, in the pottery's vernacular, the old man. But he was a great big chap, a very biggish chap. And so I must say, I, I remember clearly in, in 1952, going outside and saw this vehicle delivered for him a brand new car, which was an Austin Sherline. 
which is which is the huge headlights, like P100 type, if you know what I mean, big headlights, and in, in misty green, that was like a Rolls Royce, really. I would say it was fairly big, receding air with glasses, but very pleasant. Would say good morning to you, and he knew your name. That's what I liked about him, whereas a lot of managers don't even know your name. But Mr. Spence and Mr. Stevens, they, they, they did, you could go to them and have a conversation with them, anything like that, and a joke. That's how I found it. It was a good place to work. In the mid-70s, I was a member of the City Stoke on Trent Rifle and Pistol Club, which had their sort of shooting range in Chelsea Street and all the old pot banks. It was just a little um, office really that we used as a clubhouse. In the 1970s, it smelled of sort of stale coffee, even stale cigarette smoke, and a waft of poured out coming in every time somebody opened the door to the red. The only knowledge I've got of this site is when it was, um, it had been done up in 1977. I think it's something to do with the common market and they come round at all the roads. Put nice new flags down, nice fancy posts with the stars of the community and they made a real good job of it and then they disappeared and it hadn't been touched since. So all the posts have been rusty, the flagstones are lifting, these weeds growing up between them. But the only good thing that's happened is the coal, they've taken it over. Uh, when I used to walk past it was always derelict, just empty buildings. Oh, they made a nice job, haven't they? Can't knock, the, can't knock that. Where we, where we are sitting in, in the, you know, this, this really wonderful achievement um, uh, of, of modern development, bringing the past into the present and making it work for the future. You've got the Ensign Works, you've got all these little streets that were running around them. Well, I do a lot of history work around Longton, and I've got lots of old photos of terrace houses and little alleyways and I have to go around and show them photos rather than the actual building that was there. And it's very important for future generations to say it's still there and it was there in 1900, there in 1850. It's still in good neck, it's been done up but we're very fortunate it hasn't been demolished. I think uh, the venue is splendid, uh, it's beautiful to have that brick uh, facing us and the heritage of the property is just tremendous. It's a lovely building to look at from the exterior and from the interior it's fantastic. Really nice refurbishment, very good, it's what the area needs. Oh, Obviously the advantage is our lower fuel bills, uh, it's a lot warmer in the winter, cooler in the summer. Constantly going around checking the lights have been switched off and we recycle now, we never did before. Because of the new insulation they, they put in that kind of stuff, we don't need the central heat on as often. Uh, the solar panels also on the roof help with, with the heating and the, and the hot water, etc. That's, that's it.
Thanks for watching. Please now view the rest of the general exhibition on the kiosk by the door before proceeding upstairs to see the special exhibitions and kiln cap viewing platform. Be sure to watch your step. If you prefer not to climb the stairs, you can use the kiosk to view our special exhibitions and images of the kiln cap. Just select accessibility and choose from the options. We hope you enjoy your visit. We love your feedback, so be sure to fill in our electronic visitor book, available on any of the screens. And why not add your story to our memory wall and memory map?